If you have been working with Next.js for a while or probably some other server-side React framework, you have probably come across hydration errors. In Next.js, this error looks something like this. Text content does not match server-side rendered HTML. Now, what exactly does this hydration error mean and why does it exist and also how can you solve it? In this video, I'll be showing you how. In my previous video, I talked about hydration in React. If you haven't seen the video yet, you can check it out. But this was the diagram I used. I mentioned that when you're working with server-side content on the server, you can imagine Next.js or any other framework calling render to string component. So it will convert your component to the string version. That string version will be sent to the client. But then when it is sent to the client, your page is not yet interactive. So your event listeners will not work, your use effect, your use state, those things would not work yet because the JavaScript that contains the hydration hasn't been run. Now the job of the hydration is to attach those event listeners to your elements and as well trigger your use effect and your use state. But then sometimes during the press of hydrating, you might come across hydration errors. What exactly are these errors? Well, Next.js already tells us why exactly we're having this error and it says text content did not match. On the server, we have this and on the client, we have this. I am rendering this p tag which has today's date is and then I call new date dot get time. So what's happening here is that when this is converted to a string on the server, the new date dot get time returns this. So this is what it returns on the server. But then when this component gets to the client and this JavaScript part is run, this is now what we get on the client. So because what we have on the client as the first render doesn't match what was pre-rendered from the server, then we get this hydration error. So the cause of hydration errors is when you have a mismatch between what you have pre-rendered from the server and what you have rendered on the client for the first time. Another example could be when you are doing something like this. So here we are saying if type of window is not undefined, then return this J JSX window is defined. Now if I should refresh, we have another hydration error again. And here it says hydration field because the initial UI does not match what was rendered on the server. So what was rendered on the server, we can actually check the network tab for that. So this is the HTML that returned from the server. We have all of this and then we have H1 Next.js app, button, count is zero, some random contents here. So what you notice is that we do not have P window is defined in what we get from the server. And the reason why we do not get that from the server is because we have this conditional check that says if type of window is not undefined, then we have this GSX. Well, on the server, you do not have the window object. And because you do not have the window object, that means this GSX will not be included in what is pre-rendered from the server. But then on the client, the window object exists. And so we get this P window is defined. Now this again doesn't match what we have on the server. And so we get a hydration error. During hydration, it is expected that what you have pre-rendered on the server is the same as what you have on the client, the initial UI on the client. You're probably wondering why, and I'll show you why in a second. Let's just look at one more example. Here I have another example where I say, if local storage is not undefined, then we return this P that says team is local storage get item team. I have team saved in the local storage with the value of dark. Now if I should refresh, another hydration error. Hydration failed because the initial UI does not match what was rendered on the server. Well, again, local storage does not exist on the server, so this P is not returned. But because local storage exists on the client, then we have this P here. So why should your server have the same content as your client's initial UI during hydration? Well, the React docs puts this very great. It says that the React tree you pass to hydrate root needs to produce the same output as it did on the server. Hydrate root is 
called internally by Next.js during server-side rendering. So this is important for the user experience. The user would spend some time looking at the server-generated HTML before your JavaScript lo loads. Server rendering creates an illusion that the app loads faster by showing the HTML snapshot of its output. And suddenly, showing different content breaks that illusion. If this doesn't make sense to you, I'll explain. So what this is saying is that the reason why during hydration these things need to match is that, again, coming back to this diagram, from the previous video I mentioned hydration is supposed to add the interactivity to your application. Hydration is not supposed to change the content of your application. So when the React doc says that server-side rendering creates an illusion that the app loads faster by showing the HTML snapshot of its output, what this means is that now I have disabled JavaScript. So when you refresh, so currently this button is not working, the site is not interactive yet, all those use effects, use state, those things are not running, but then the user doesn't know. So the idea of server-side rendering is that the initial output of your component, it should on the page the user doesn't know that it's not yet interactive then few seconds or milliseconds later hydration would run and when hydration run the user clicks on the button it works so let me comment this line then i'm going to enable javascript again so what you notice here is by the time you refresh we get the output from the server then hydration is triggered and then when you click on this this works so that's what the React docs meant by server-side rendering creates an illusion that the app loads faster by showing the HTML snapshot of its output. Because hydration is supposed to add interactivity, it wouldn't make sense that the user refreshes the page, then this shows that maybe the JavaScript takes few seconds to load, and then all of a sudden you just see team is dark showing here. And I mean, you could still run a set timeout in a use effect that shows that text few seconds later. Solving hydration errors is also important because as you read here, React recovers from some hydration errors, but it must fix them like other bugs. In the best case, they'll lead to a slowdown, and in the worst case, event handlers can get attached to the wrong element. So when you have a mismatch between the server and the client, this can happen. So to avoid this from happening, then you have to ensure that what is coming from the server is always equal to the initial UI on the client. So that is why the error exists. Now, how do you solve the error? Well, there are a couple of ways you can solve this error. One way is by using use effect. Since your use effect runs on the client when your component has been mounted, then in that use effect, you can do this. We can also use state to keep the date. I just give this as null new date dot get time here. And now we can render this part and say today's date is and then we pass the date. And now if we should refresh, we don't have that hydration anymore. So during hydration, interactivity is added and then this use effect is called. Now when this use effect is called, this date is updated and the component re-renders. Now this is not the initial render. This is a re-render that is triggered after a state update. And in that re-render, we now have a different value here. So from the server, date is going to be null. If I should comment this part, I check the network tab again. What we get from the server is that today's date is and then we don't have anything here. So what we have here now is the output from the server matches the initial UI on the client. Then in our use effect, we can now update state which would cause a re-render and in that re-render, we can now get the actual date. Another way you can solve it is by, if I come here and I put this back here, we're going to get our hydration error. But instead on this P tag, I can use the suppress hydration warning prop. And by putting this to true, I'm saying, yeah, don't worry about that warning. And now I would have that hydration error avoided. So I hope this video helps you understand how hydration errors occur and why they exist in the first place and also shows you some ways on solving them when building React applications. If you haven't checked out my video on hydration, you see it on the screen you can check it out if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others and subscribe for more simplified react videos like this